Good morning, everyone. A little bit of sunshine after a week of rain, so it's always a welcome. I also welcome those who are joining us on Facebook Live. We're happy to have you amongst us as one body in Christ. As is our tradition, we have announcements to start with. And um, I'd like you all to pull out the book of, of Common Prayer, the red book, for those who may not be familiar with it. And I would like you to all turn to page 364, 364. And those who are watching online, you can actually get the Book of Common Prayer online and turn to page 364 if you'd like to join us, or if you have a book handy. And you will see at the top where it says People and Celebrant, there are two um, uh, Lord's Prayer, and the one that we have traditionally said has, is on the left, or, yeah, my left. <laughs> And we will be, starting next week, for the next three months, making some changes to our liturgy. We are going to be using um, Enriching Our wish Worship, which quite frankly has been around since 1998, so it's not relatively new. But we have not been using it, I know, at least during my tenure here, which is coming up to a full seven years and starting eight years, um, in mid-July, believe it or not. So there will be slight changes to the Nicene Creed, slight changes to the Confession, and this is an attempt to probably shake things up a little bit. Sometimes prayers and words can become rote, and it's important that we begin to hear Scripture perhaps in a different way, the Nicene Creed in a slightly different way. So we all will be learning. We'll have to take it a little slowly. And we may be looking in our, pew bo uh, pew, or in our books or on our, um, bro or in our uh, bulletin in order to follow along more carefully. But probably the biggest change, quite frankly, will be the Lord's Prayer. For those like myself, I have been exposed to both. In seminary, we always um, said the one on the, on the right. Uh, however, I have learned in my own home parish and even here that we have traditionally said the one on the left. Um, and it's so interesting when I do some services in memory care units um, in this area, there may not be any responses, but when we do the Lord's Prayer, people begin to pray that because they know it so well. So, but let us just try this new one. It doesn't mean that we will stay there, but I want you to hear some words or the prayers, perhaps in a different way. And so I just bring you your attention to this. We are gonna be journeying along together, and we will want your feedback um, and sort of your impressions. Did anything spark you or not, or do away with that prayer and let's bring it, the other one back? whatever it might be, um, but I just wanted to alert all of you because starting next Sunday, we will be using um, the new language, okay? So not to frighten anyone, and I hope you all return. And also, as you know, we are always will have hospitality, very important after our worship together in the church wing. Um, but during the summer, we're just gonna keep it simple. If you choose to bring something to eat, that is totally up to you, but we are encouraging people just to offer uh, two drinks, whether it's some soda and some iced tea or lemonade and iced tea or some wonderful concoction that you have. Uh, and that allows us to wet our whistle and also enjoy each other's company and catch up with one another. And also, we are beginning to look at... Um, reinstituting our um, Eucharistic visitors who go and visit those who cannot get here on a Sunday to bring communion to them, and also our healing prayers that we used to have on a monthly basis 
Um, and we're just beginning sort of reorganizing that. We had to take, uh, do away with them during the season of COVID, uh, but I think it's important that we bring them back. So if anyone is interested in being a Eucharistic visitor, there is training and it is required, um, and also healing or the healing ministry or even both. There is training in there as well, with that as well. Please speak to me because I'll be happy to share with you what it in, um, encompasses. And then we will be putting out, Jane and I and others will be putting out some information about both of those ministries as we go through the summer. Um, but I just wanted to alert you to that. We also need your picture for our board. Um, and we'll take your picture here. We've gotten some pictures sent to Carrie and she can download them and print them out for us. Um, so your pictures is going to be a little um, board for all of a bulletin and of all the people who are here. We have some new members so we can connect names with faces. So please do that. And if you want us to take a picture of you, we can do that and handle it um, if you don't have one to give at home from home. It's a lot of information. It's all in your bulletin. And now let's take just a few moments to settle ourselves, to open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hearing God's word through the scripture that we will hear, through the hymns that we will sing, and through the prayers that we will offer up silently or aloud. I'm so glad you are all here with us today. Thank you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are known, all desires open, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. But whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their internal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you, I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 69, verses 8 through 20. We will read responsibly. By the by whole verse. Surely for your sake have I suffered a pro reproach, and shame has covered my face. Saints to my own kindred, and alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I hold myself with fasting. That was turned to her. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Draw me to me, draw near to me, and redeem me.
because of my enemies deliver me. Second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 11, verses 1b through 11. Should we continue to sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by, by him bap, baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we, still, we will also live with him. We know that Christ is being raised from the dead. We will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none, uh, one, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 
and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Listen to these words of wisdom for graduating seniors. If you want to be the best, you have to do things others aren't willing to do. Michael Phelps. Follow your passion. It will lead you to your purpose. Oprah Winfrey. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Wayne Gretzky. It is absolutely still possible to make a difference. Michelle Obama. Words of wisdom that offer hope to the graduate, graduates who are entering the wor real wor world. Ugh. But do these words paint the full realities of the ups and downs of life? Commencement speeches don't mention the dark side of life. These are days for celebration and achievement, designed to focus on the positives, not the challenges. So clearly, the portion of Jesus' speech we heard today, known as the missionary discourse, would not have made it as a commencement speech. Who wants to hear the full truth of what it means to follow Jesus. Now, last Sunday, the disciples were given great powers and sent out without Jesus beside them. And in my sermon, I emphasized that Jesus calls all of us, and I even called you out by name, asking if you were ready to be an apostle, one who was sent out to proclaim the good news. I don't know about you, but reading this today and last week's gospel message, we all may desire to keep only one foot in the church, not both, so we can remain safe and content and comfortable. Who wouldn't want that in a world that is full of anger and fear and uncertainty? Jesus tells us discipleship comes at a cost. There is no guarantee that we will be always safe, content, and comfortable. In fact, we won't. In today's gospel reading, Jesus continues to give the hard truth of what it means to be his follower. You will be treated with fear and contempt. Everything will be uncovered, including all that we hide from our God Family members will turn against family members. Your heart and love first must be for Jesus, no one else. You must take up the cross and follow, follow him. Otherwise, you are not worthy. Now, these are not quotes for a commencement speech, but the hard truth of being a follower. So showing up on Sunday morning isn't all that there is to be a good Christian. It's important, but it isn't, and it, but it is only the beginning. We must embody our faith 24-7, not just for an hour and a half on Sunday morning 
or when we show kindness towards a family member or offer a prayer up to someone in need. All good things to do. But Jesus is asking us to dig deeper. Surface religion or your surface faith won't stand the test of time, according to Jesus. And he knows that. He knew that firsthand. No, he challenges us to overcome our fear and step out in the, out of the darkness, shouting from the rooftops our love for Jesus. And quite frankly, that sounds, for, at least for me, a bit uncomfortable. A little too in your face. A little evangelical. But this demanding request isn't the end of the story. Throughout this reading and all the readings today are guideposts that tell us our fears don't get the last word. God's love does. So as I read the scripture reading, something caught my attention and helped me to understand that I am not alone in my journey. And if you think because I am ordained that I have mastered this call of discipleship, oh no, I have not. We are all in the same boat, learning how to walk through our lives as Christians. Now the first verse of this reading, Jesus says in part, a disciple is not above the teacher. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher. The teacher. Who have been the teachers in your life? People who have modeled for you what it means to follow Jesus and not be fearful. People who have taken the time to guide you, speak truth to you when no one else would. Jesus was the teacher for the disciples, and he is also our teacher. But I would beg to say that there are many people in our lives who have taught us things that we may not have realized in that moment, but upon reflection, their memory or the memory of their wisdom provides what we need to be a bold disciple. This is what happened to Dr. Janet Hunt, a Lutheran pastor, when she was reminded how two important people in her life became her teachers, who helped her to live into being a disciple and also a pastor. She wrote that she was sort of scrolling through Facebook and up popped a picture that caught her by surprise and it put her back in time. She remembered the face of a man who taught her about dying bravely without fear. Fear that often grips us in times of uncertainty and even death. Here are her words as she reminisced about the man in the photo. She said, I had pulled into the driveway of their old farmhouse. I could see Larry standing at the kitchen door, his hair now gone from the battle of cancer. I had to keep my head down because my heart caught in my throat as I made my way towards the back steps. We stood in the kitchen and visited a while, and when I left, he said to me, you know, I'm not afraid to die. George taught me how to do this. He was speaking then of our precious friend whose dying we had grieved together not so many years ago. It was a Saturday in August when Larry and I met up and traveled together to see George to plan for his funeral. I can't recall now if we knew that what would happen, but we did know time was growing short and one more visit wouldn't wait. We talked about music that day and scripture, who would sit at the organ bench, who would fill the pulpit. And George knew what he wanted. At the end of our time together, he exclaimed, Oh, how I wish I could be there. 
With tears standing in his eyes, his good friend Larry replied, Oh, but you will be there. Not all dying is done with such grace and gratitude. It can, and often does, get messy along the way. Even so, I find I look at these two men who have taught me, and I expect that however it is, however it will be for me, it will be only a sketchy approximation of their fine examples. And yet I keep striving. We keep striving. Don't we? End quote. Great teachers help us strive to be better, particularly teachers who share their own faith and experiences with us. We may not know we are being given that gift of wisdom as we walk beside them, but we are. Clearly, Larry and George taught Pastor Hunt when knowing that their deaths were imminent, how not to be afraid and to believe deeply in Jesus' love and promise of eternal life. They understood that their mortal life was just one small blip in this crazy adventure of being Jesus' follower. Jesus isn't waxing words eloquently together to hide the difficulties of walking in his footsteps. Much is expected of us, and it often flows against the grain of our secular world, a world that often values winning at the cost of leaving others behind, a world that values wealth at the cost of preventing others from advancing, people and communities who become so self-absorbed that they lose, they lose focus and even ignore the injustices all around them. Or worse, they are surprised when the injustice takes place. But what, te- what have teachers taught us? I know for mine have shown me what it means to walk with God. I think of Tom, who taught me how to stand firm in my faith, never to run from my faith or even my congregation, particularly when communities would get messy and become divided. He always stayed faithful. I have another teacher by the name of Tom as well, and you'll meet him later this summer. And he reminds me that it is never too late to learn and grow in our faith. He is always introducing me to new articles, new authors, and podcasts. His work on racism in his beloved city of Memphis is remarkable. He has matured and has mastered his ability to listen and truly hear the stories of racism experienced by his black sisters and brothers. And he doesn't shy away from building bridges with others because he knows it is what a follower of Jesus must do. I have another teacher who understood prayer as the foundation of her faith. Lou taught me that no prayer was too small or inconsequential and to always pray unceasingly. These teachers invited me to walk beside them and learn from their wisdom. They never expected me to do anything that they wouldn't do themselves. And I hope that you too, and you, have teachers in your lives. No one is above another, Jesus tells us, no matter their title, their age, their gender, their depth in faith. We are all sojourners together learning to live into being faithful followers. We have a teacher in Jesus and in others who desire a deeper relationship beyond merely sitting in the pews on Sunday morning. The words Jesus shares with us today, my friends, are they're harsh. He doesn't sugarcoat life as many a commencement speaker does. No, he wants us to know the fullness of our call not simply the highlights. But don't leave here today with only the harsh words stuck in your head. Remember, he also intertwines 
words of love and words of joy and hope as well. His love for us that is greater than the common sparrow whom he will not let fall. And he has knit us in his likeness every strand of hair on our heads. This world needs us out in the community, sharing God's love with others. It shouldn't be locked up in here or at home only to be brought out on Sunday morning. Share your faith with others, just as those faith teachers in your life showed you. Much is expected of us. And my friends, Jesus awaits. Amen. to recite the Nicene Creed, as found on page seven of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. prayers of the people. God has called us to be priests for all peoples, offering to God the world's concerns. Let us then pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our sovereign God, for you do not abandon what you have created but continue to make your grace known among us. We thank you for those you have chosen to speak your reconciling word in this age, and we pray for the grace to receive it. Blessed are you, our caring God, for you hear the cries of the poor. You see the tears in the eyes of all who mourn. You feel the pain of those in anguish, and you come to the side of the lonely. Call your church to compassion and service. Blessed are you, our God of peace, for you have bid us to make warfare cease and to place our trust in you, who bore us up on eagles' wings. Raise up among us peacemakers and confound those who trust in chariots and horses. Blessed are you, our God of justice, for you desire that all be one. Erase the prejudice and class divisions among us, that together we might share in your vision of harmony. Blessed are you, our God of strength, for you do not desire harm, but you favor our health. Give to us the necessary measures of health, patience, and hope. We especially pray for those on our parish prayer list, Joe C., Chip, Raymond, 
Peggy, Sally E, Liz M, Kevin M, Lisa P, Victor, Joyce T, Kim, Bernie C, Tony, Midge, Timothy G, Alex V, Barbara, Joan L, Rachel, Doreen, Norma, Virginia, Don, Kevin, and Isla. Blessed are you, our God of joy. We give you thanks for the blessings of this life, including for those celebrating anniversaries as well as birthdays, especially Bud King and Andre Ifill. Into your hands, O God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace and also our friends on Facebook Live. reminder for those who may be visiting um, you are all welcome for communion and what we do is come up to you will be excused from by your usher you come up you may either kneel or stand and cup your hand to receive the bread um, and then you will have the opportunity to drink from the cup um, you may do one or the other if you choose not to have communion but still want to come forward, and I hope you will. Come and cross your hands, across your chest, your arms across your chest, and I will be happy to give you a blessing. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and you called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
prayer together. Almighty and ever-living God, thank you for feeding us with the fear of the most precious body and blood, for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us with his holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, with the witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Don't forget your thing. Yeah, we're going. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exception. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. They cracked me up. <laughs>